I'm Dean Eldred and this, this is, is the old farmhouse bakery on 11 Mile. Light any good? There we go. Wonderful. Okay. So we're making a little Italian meringue today and through experimenting I found out how to ruin it and that is by not weighing your egg whites. So when a recipe says four egg whites, what they mean is four ounces. So if you put in more than four, then the product tastes like dishwater soap. If you put in less than, it tastes like marshmallow. So if you want an a amazing dessert, weigh it, and then you'll, you'll have something to remember. Now this is the start of a simple syrup. It's one cup of sugar and one half cup of water and I'm going to bring this up to a boil and boil the water out of it so I'm left with molten sugar. So at the end of it I'm going to mix that in with the meringue, uh, with egg whites, cream of tartar, vanilla and a little bit of salt that I'll have in the mixer. So I get this started and when you first see it boil, all that steam coming off is what we're, we're trying to get rid of that water. So then all we have is a molten sugar in here. So that'll take a few minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to weigh four ounces of egg white. There we go. Right on the money. It's pretty close. So we'll dump that in here. We're going to have one teaspoon of cream of tartar. And then later on, we're going to add a teaspoon of vanilla. So we'll get this started. Is there a vanilla that you prefer, or is there a, um, just some type of Amish? <laughs> Amish is not a good name for cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Around here, the Amish don't use any flavoring. Oh, okay. So if you want bland food, a bland cookie, up here from the Amish is flour and water. Wow. Because they don't believe that you should have pleasure from food. Oh, no. So this isn't the way it is all over the world, but that's how it is in Macosta County. Gotcha. So, do you know that you can't taste vanilla? No, I didn't know you that. You didn't know that? No. Yeah. Well, while we're waiting this to boil, um, take a tip your finger and dab that in. Oh, let me get in the shot. Here. Okay. And then uh, don't put it in your oh, mouth yet. I did. <laughs> oh. Should I do okay, another plug, one? Pl well, plug your nose. Or should I uh, rinse, rinse my clean palate? Your, clean your palate. But oh, what okay. you're supposed to do is plug your nose and then put your dab of finger on there. Oh, okay. So now we'll try this again. I'll use a different finger this okay. time. And I'll hold, don't put it in. Let me hold the camera. Oh, ready? Okay. No, so, okay. What's it taste like? Nothing. Unplug your nose. There you go. Mm. So that's a pretty cool trick. Yeah. And when you're cooking, water is often a problem. And uh, in pie dough, if you add excess water, the two proteins in the flour combine to make gluten. And that makes a tough uh, pie crust. So if you can minimize the amount of water, you can have a tender, tender crust. Okay. So the problem is that another problem is water H2O. The two hydrogen atoms give up an electron to the oxygen atom. That makes a, the whole thing negatively charged. 
So when you have two negatives are going together, they don't want to combine. So this water you're trying to combine is pushing away. So if you just dump a bunch of water and then it just floods everything, again, you get more gluten in a, in a real tough crust. Hmm. So if you can replace that electron without adding more water, that's the trick. And I found out that vanilla will do that. And since you can't taste it, it's a good substitute for that electron. Huh. So that's interesting. It also works in when you're making cement. You've got sometimes when that same phenomenon happens, and then fertilizing uh, plants in clay soil, especially, you're trying to get the nutrients down to the root zone without putting so much water that you wash them away. The same technique. Uh, in farming, you call it a surficant. And uh, now I remember an old uh, saying where you want to make water wetter. Well, that's one way I make water wetter. And I tried pickle juice and vinegar and a lot of different things, but those all have flavor. I don't want to flavor this. Oh. I just want to replace that electron. So I'm going to break this thing up a little bit. Get the cream of tartar worked in. water boiled out of it. We're going to turn it off and let it cool off a little bit. So this is just starting to make a meringue. But Starting to taste like something. Oh, let me get a book here. figured out is the old ladies that made the pie where I grew up never never made or measured anything 
because the meringue always tastes awful. Hmm. And I'd scrape it aside to get at the pie. I love the lemon pie. Right. But I didn't like that meringue. But once I made this, it's like, yep, this is, this is amazing. And you saw the volume pick up. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> that is just gigantic. Well, this is where the mile high lemon meringue pie <laughs> idea came from. Yeah. So. That is crazy. Now, a throwback to when I worked on refrigeration. I, I have my old uh, hair dryer I used to uh, thaw out refrigeration coils. And, uh, oh, so yeah. go and walk in cooler and use this. Well, when you stick this pie in the oven to toast that, it would warm up the uh, pudding. And then often it would separate. Hmm. All this does is heat up the meringue. Gotcha. So. Yeah. And if we don't taste it, and it'll dry out, and it'll be like an old dry marshmallow, which is terrible. Right. And uh, so toasting it one way or another is something that's got to be done. Yeah, you can see the color now. Yeah, that's also, that's, that's, uh, toasting just the outer layer, it's not yeah. drying out everything or and then baking it. When your all. meringue is this thick, if you try to do it in the oven, it'll toast the outside, but you'll have raw egg inside. Mm -hmm. So by using a simple syrup that cooks the meringue while it's getting whipped up. And, uh, so all those... All of it is cooked prior to even putting it on the fire. Hmm. So not only is this fun to make, but it's really good. There you go. That's a picture. Oh, hi. <laughs> Our baby girl. <laughs> oh, teacher. Oh, hey, you. No. <laughs> what are you going to have? Lemon? I'm going to have this. Oh, look at those lemons. Good. Mm. <laughs> Oh my God, that's wonderful. That's a good pie. That's a darn good pie. That's <laughs> Money can't buy this one either. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm. That's my dad's favorite too. That's amazing. What a transformation when you cook that sugar. Right? Oh my gosh, yeah. 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 It changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, a bunch of other people do. We all well, I say it. I ruin pie for most of I'm telling you. We go somewhere and they say, why bother? Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll stop in 11 Mile Road and have real pie. Yeah. So, right. That's the best lemon meringue pie I've ever had in my life. Aww. Not an exaggeration. Yeah, that meringue Aww. is just That's amazing. Awful, isn't it? Well, you, what? Now, Dean's got a video, and I'm going to put a link right here to that video about he makes how he makes his crust and it's a perfect flaky crust every time 
I gotta find the. Yeah. <laughs> and so this is just a piece of his crust that I'm gonna try, which I've already tried, but I'm gonna try it again. You need to watch his video <laughs> because that's amazing, mm. amazing stuff. Okay.